Hello, Paul Beckwith. In my previous video on global population, of which this is a continuation, I talked about UN population projections, which basically assume business as usual, and they talk about reaching our global population going from this just over 7.5 billion today to uh, over 8 billion by about 2024 or so, and then continuing upward to 9 billion through 10 billion uh, by the end of, by, by 2100 or, or before, and maybe stabilizing about that level or continuing up. Now, that's a business as usual uh, projection, and they really need to start incorporating abrupt climate change and food supply and all of these pressures that are happening in our present day situation and come up with reasonable numbers because their projections are, are completely out to lunch. Um, I talked about James Lovelock, Lovelock's projections of culling over, over this uh, century, leading us to a population in 2100 of 500 million people, up to a billion people at the most, living in quite different areas, parts of the world. And then there's the extremely uh, way out there project, projection that, you know, in, it, by 2020. By, by the mid of, of uh, next decade, you know, our population will be close to zero within about 10 years or so. So we go all across the board. The UN projections are, are really out there. You know, they're assuming business as usual, which is not happening. And then you have these projections by, you know, the, the, these, uh, one projection by this guy um, who's saying that we're all extinct in 10 years, which is just as ludicrous, in, in my opinion. I'm, I lean closer to the James Lovelock um, view. Now, what I, and I have done videos, on, a lot of videos previously on this, um, on my views. So this was from a couple years ago. Um, there's always an elephant in the room. When we talk about climate change solutions, population is the elephant. Nobody wants to talk about global population. Why? You know, you have a room full of intellectuals discussing some topic and population is the taboo. Yet population is vital for all of these stresses that are occurring. The growing population is just stressing our planet to the max. So this was, you know, we're 7.5 billion today. The growth rate's 1.1% now. Okay, when something grows by a certain percentage each year, then it's exponential growth. So that'd be compound interest, population. So it's an absolute madness to allow the population to continue to grow like this on our planet. So what should we do? Okay, so we have two scenarios. Population remains the elephant, continues to grow unchecked. Perhaps abrupt climate change is arrested and we make it to 2030 without global famine and the population reaches 8 billion, then 9 billion by 2050 or so, then the system crashes and we plummet downwards through 5 billion, 4 billion, 1 billion. It will just be a matter of time before we crash. It will be definite if we do not address population. Or we recognize our limitation, we arrest or stop abrupt climate change, stabilize the climate, stabilize the population at 7.5 billion and taper it down to a more sustainable 5 billion or less over the longer term. So many people ask me, is it moral, how is it, is it moral to consider limiting population to 7.5 billion or some number close to d today's value but lower? I ask these people, how is it moral to allow population to rise upwards past 8 billion to 9 billion and then have billions of people starve to death and the population plummets? Okay, um, right, we, this, I would argue that this is much less moral than this. You know, we have tough choices to make, and I'll talk about some of my ideas on what we need to do um, further, further out. So let's talk about, let's give you some other examples here of exponential growth. So if you just Google Google Images, go examples of exponential growth, you'll get this setting. So here's one, you know, if you put, if you put a penny in the first square of a checkerboard or chessboard, two pennies in the next one, four in the next one, eight, and so on, okay, you go through this part of the board, you'll be at 512 billion here. 512 billion. 
and the next one will be a thousand billion or you know a trillion and so on okay so the exponential growth it just goes boom you know if you have exponential growth of lily pads on a pond and the pond gets filled in 30 days when is the pond going to have ha be half filled with lily pads on day 29 one day before it's filled that's the nature of exponential growth okay there's lots of other examples um and uh you know here's bacteria day one day two it doubles each one each one splits so now you've got four each one splits again and very very quickly you the system blows up you know six days it's full here okay um okay here's uh there, there's one person and there's two people from each person comes two more here and then boom it blows up very very quickly okay there's loads of examples of, of of what exponential growth does and we really don't understand it and we're having exponential growth in the population we're having exponential growth in the change that we're that that we're we're causing on our planet Okay, uh, it just goes on and on and on. There's a little bit of math there and so on, okay? Okay, so let's now look, consider the impact. Okay, so this is, a, this is the IPAT, okay? This is a little simple formula. The impact of human activity on the environment is a product of the population times the affluence, okay, times technology. Okay, when our technology was a but much more primitive, the impact on the planet was much smaller. For example, think, you know, now we, for example, you know, cut the way we cut down trees, the way we mine, the way we do anything to the planet, our technologies are making it more efficient and they're allowing us to scale up operations and do it on a massive scale, which then has global consequences. Affluence, the richer we are, the more we consume, the more we spend, the more impact we have on the environment. And of course, population is a huge influence on this too. As I showed in the previous video, we're getting exponential increases in technology. Okay, think of what the iPhone does now compared to the, the computers that, um, that uh, were in the Apollo program, taking, taking uh, humans to the moon. Um, the population, as I'm sh I've showed, is exponential. The affluence is ever increasing. People, especially with social media and, and uh, global news, people see how other people are doing and they strive to match that. Even for, so develop, developing countries want to eat more meat and they want to you know, have drive, drive bigger, better drive cars, bigger, better cars, or even have cars in the first place where they didn't before. Um, they want to have in bigger houses, they want to grow, right? So, so the net, this is just stressing the environment too much, okay? So this is a, you know, this equation was developed in the 70s. Um, and, you know, it just makes sense. Now there's, the, one of the things is, is it, it treats population, affluence, and technology as, diff, as independent. But of course, there's a relationship as there's more and more people, there's more Einsteins, there's you know, if a certain fraction of the population is very inventive, then a much larger population, there'll be more inventive people, so technology will increase. As technology will increase, um, it drives up the amount of earnings and so on, which increases the affluence. So these are all connected. So this is a little bit of a simplification. I mean, this is the population growing up. This is the world GDP or the affluence, the GDP per capita per person going up globally. And of course, uh, the technology going up, I showed a curve in the previous video on the technology. Okay, so basically what we're talking about is the great acceleration. So this is a great site, International Geosphere Biosphere Program, or just Google the great acceleration. And you see these type of curves here. Okay, you can look at them all separately, individually, or I'll just look at them here. These are the socioeconomic trends. Okay, so this is 1950 is the dashed line in all of these. So we have population climbing, real GDP, direct investment, 
urban population increasing. People are going to cities more and more often, and I, I talked a little bit about that in when I was discussing the, the book's scale by Jeffrey West. Um, city scale, you know, it's beneficial for people to congregate together because they become more efficient on a per capita basis in large cities. So urban population rise. Primary energy use, fertilizer consumption for growing food, large dams, water use, paper production, transportation, telecommunications, tourism, everything up, going up as if there's no tomorrow, spiking upwards. Okay, um, this divides it into um, OECD, BRICS, and other countries, so different regions of the world. Um, okay, Brazil, Russia, India, China, basically BRICS, the uh, OECD countries, the West, and other countries, and you can see um, it divides it up and shows how, you know, stuff is growing wherever you are in the world. And then we'll look at this. Uh, now these are the Earth system trends, and these are these are coming to bite us very quickly. So we've got CO2 rise in the atmosphere. We've got nitrous oxide rise. We've got methane rise. Global warming potential of nitrous oxide is about 300. Methane, 34 over a 100 year time scale, 86 over a 20 year time scale, 150 to 200 over one, a few year time scale. Okay, these things are all growing. Stratospheric ozone. Okay, ozone up was percent loss in this case, okay? The ozone hole increasing and arrested. Surface temperature rising, ocean acidification because there's more and more CO2 in the atmosphere, there's more and more in the oceans, it goes into the surface, we're getting ocean acidification. Off the charts compared to what we, what we think for the last 25, 30 million years. Marine fish captured, swim, shrimp aquaculture. So human, human uh, aquaculture of shrimp on coastlines, adding, you know, that adds huge amounts of nitrogen in coastal zones, causes uh, eutrophication, um, dead zones, algae blooms followed by dead zones, tropical forest loss on the rise, domesticated land, um, percent of total land area is becoming domesticated, more and more domesticated land, less and less natural or wild lands, terrestrial biosphere degradation, percentage decrease, mean species abundance. Okay, so we're getting, you know, massive percentages of species that are we're decreasing that, that we're decreasing i mean basically what we're doing is we're we're, we're doing um, a, a huge we're, we're changing the very nature of the planet okay we're, we're decreasing the biomass in all other species and plants as well and we're we're converting you know we're we're we're, we're our population is skyrocketing and the human biomass is is increasing in, at an exponential rate, and you can see where this is going to end. It's going to end in a crash. I mean, there's no other option. So, you know, we can either be be uh, stupid and show that you know, as a species, we we we're, we we have no, we we're not really an, an intelligent species. You know, we can see where we're heading. If we can see where we're heading and it's very bad, and we continue to go there, then I guess do we deserve what we get? I mean. We're going to reach where we're heading eventually. We have to collectively become a lot smarter. We have to do things differently and back off from the precipice. So, so this is a, you know, this is a great site, the great acceleration. Um, and uh, there's actually the slide I'm looking for is in here. Okay, so this is showing urban population, GDP, energy use. This is showing all the graphs that I showed before. Okay, um, except at the end, I believe. Yeah, so I, I noticed that this particular website, they stopped updating this since 2015. I'm not sure why. Okay, but there's the Stockholm Resilience Center, Future Earth Info. Um, and there's other organizations, Anthropocene.info, that are, is good information on, you know, the limits that we're pushing against. So, you know, surely humanity is 
can be collectively smart enough to back off from this. If not, then uh, it's a very, very grim and dire future. So, so thanks again for listening.